Hey everybody, this is Inara Ariane Griffin. And as we come out of the full moon influence in Cancer, first full moon of the year, I spent some deep time reflecting and wanting to share something with you. I also feel that this is the time to start sharing amongst groups of spiritually minded people who are working in business. And so if you feel the uh, passion of this, I would ask you also to share this message to other people. So just hit share. I want to get messages out this year. That's part of the refinement of what was coming through. We need to know that other people are there with us. You know, we sometimes very much so with entrepreneurial people, we work so much on our own. And then we've had this period of time also with COVID bringing us inward. And, you know, when I was reflecting like last year in England, we were still in lockdown at this time of year, we were still in lockdown. So we haven't even had a year out on our own to be able to, you know, create new profiles, move amongst new people. It's been a very short lived time that we've been out experiencing freedom. And I was reflecting very much on this group of like minded people in my own world, I feel often that to really connect at the level of looking at how to create spiritual business in the world. And by that, I mean, there's two threads of it. There are conventional businesses, which is starting to take in spiritual ideas, goals, ethics, ways of working. And there are also spiritual businesses who need to learn the refinement of making money, getting known and, and getting over the, the poor man's mentality, which is all about if you're poor, you're good. If you're spiritual and poor, you're good. And if you speak about money, you're bad. And both of those ends of a spectrum, you know, conventional business really needs to take on spiritual ethics because we are in a critical time with the planet right now and we cannot build yet more hotels in the Amazon without also bringing into alignment everything that is going on with the indigenous people, everything that is going on with looking after Mother Earth and not just seeing it as another conquest. So I was reflecting over the journey of where I am in my life. And I'm sure you are all doing that too. This is what tends to happen in January. And I realized that this year is all about refinement and being very seasoned in the work that I do. I was reflecting on the journey that it's cost to, or the impact of the journey that it's taken for me to get to this point. And there were a couple of things that I really wanted to me message about. So in the process of creating at the level of mastery, artistry, a masterpiece, there are also equally the mysteries coming into that. That's the feminine mysteries. And the feminine mysteries or the spaciousness or it would be the legacy or the piece of you that has a calling when you feel called forward. And when I look back on why I'm here, why I'm here doing what I do, which is advising as a spiritual business coach and also a visionary advisor guide. I remember that it started when I was nine years old, specifically in the bottom of a garden in Yorkshire, my grandmother's garden, I used to live with her. And I went down to the bottom of the garden, I was up late, and I knew that I was had to go to bed soon. So I was probably in that fuzzy, tired, you know, being called in, but didn't want to go in, looking at the night sky, connecting deeply at a, a very potent place with nature, looking at the stars and the moon. And all of a sudden, something happened. And I can only describe it as a deep spiritual connection. It was also, I can remember it as clearly as when it was happening right now. And to know that that was one of those turning points, the tweaks that happen in your life where you're being guided by forces outside the self. 
and I realized I must speak on a spiritual level. I remember later on, I mean, it wasn't being taught. There was nothing being taught. I went on a spiritual journey. And by the time I was 14, I already knew that I was going to be writing books about ritual and spirituality and ceremony without having any evidence or understanding of what that meant. But by 14, I knew that was part of what I'm doing. And sure enough, I, I am an author. I've been writing several chapters recently, one in Mindset Mastery or Mastery Mindset, which is going to be released, a collaboration of, I think it's 12 authors all together speaking on that topic. And I'm in the process of writing one, Living Your Passion. And all of that came from a nine-year-old um, understanding that there was a very important moment in life and when we look at each year, we don't know when those callings are going to drop in, right? That was mystery happening. And what we have in between is mastery, which is working step by step, like an apprentice, then to journeyman, then to master. And at this stage in my life, I feel I've hit the level of master, mastery. I'm working with mastery. And it's a subtle... It's the subtlety of refinement, of how to speak to people, of how to um, impact somebody's world, of how not to shut down some of the people that you will encounter, but instead to inspire. It doesn't mean that you work with all of those people. And I know that there were two very key moments in my life which caused this acceleration. Um, one was about 30 years ago now, and I was diagnosed with a terminal illness. And in the moment of diagnosis, while I was sitting in the chair being diagnosed by a doctor and being told that I technically didn't have long to live, and I was 32, I basically had this other mystery connection, which in the same moment that those words were being spoken to me, I also had another dialogue going on actively, which said, this is not your story. This is not your story. It's almost like a delete point of something I'm being told in real life. This is not your story being told from the level of mysteries. And it made me into the, the woman I am now because I made a choice right after that, that it was like, I'm going to choose some things for life, like life practices. That was yoga. That was also my spiritual path in the Western mysteries. So very much the Avalonian priestess path, deep delving into almost like the indigenous path of Britain and Ireland and Scotland. And that was a commitment for life. And I've never, ever stopped doing that. And the other piece was, at the same time, it's like, live as if it's your last day. Like, make decisions as if it's your last day. Make choices. And never be held back by something that seems insurmountable. And so that's driven me definitely in some of the business avenues that I went in. And another big force that was part of... Um, and these aren't pleasant experiences, right? That, you know, you don't look back and think, oh, I really wanted to have a terminal illness. Um, but I, here I am many, many years later, you know, it's, it's not affected my life. It took a lot of mental and emotional refinement to not make that run me that I had a terminal illness. And they, the other thing I would say that was really um, too kind of devastating patterns, which I believe are, you know, long-term patterns in my life, even as far back as many lives, that there's been a bullying um, element. So I moved a lot when I was a child. I moved between countries. And every time I would show up, even as a little kid, as being the new kid on the block, the outsider, deeply spiritual, always a bit like a fairy energy that would come into town. And the locals always bullied me. And I, so I've had bullying experiences in the north of England. I've had bullying experiences in Canada, very extreme ones. And what that created for me was to be, I used to be just rebellious and just go, 
you're not going to bring me down. But now I'm an advocate for a different way of life. That's the refinement piece. That's who I am being. It cost me a dream um, about five years ago when I was uh, running a running a yoga festival and it was my passion and I thought I would do that for the rest of my life. It would be the thing. So I created this amazing vision. I put loads of my own money into it and created a yoga festival just outside of London and it lasted four years. There were three active years. And then on the fourth, we didn't sell enough tickets. And part of the issue was because on the second year after inception again i went through a very extreme bullying and this was very public this was um somebody who worked at the festival who really started this hate campaign and it was all over facebook i couldn't bring it down and it was somebody who was paid for one thing that they did but something that they didn't do they weren't paid for and it quite reasonably they didn't create a website we didn't pay them for it but he targeted not just not just the group he targeted me specifically and i was able to then he gathered momentum and then it was in the yoga scene and nobody wanted to associate with me as part of the yoga scene because they didn't want to get their reputation tainted so bullying has been a piece as well also not pleasant um and I have a lot of understanding of what it's like to be in the social media world and in the eye. And what that caused me is to be somebody I, I retreated for some time, some years. But now that I'm moving forward, much with this work, I actually want to connect on a big level of spirituality. And I'm an advocate for it. I'm an advocate for it being in business and changing the operating systems that people are using in their business rather than focusing on the money, I look at where do you lose power? Where are the power drains, if you like? And I've started working with a very potent spiritual archetype of king and queen. Archetypal king and archetypal queen. When I say that to you, you will immediately have an idea. You even might even sit up straight, right? When you think of yourself as the refined queen or the refined king, and you're making decisions from that place rather than the lower energies which are in reaction. So for me, it would be re rebel is in reaction. Um, now as a refined queen, who am I being? I'm being somebody who alters the way people see things. And a lot of it has courage as part of it. It's, it's refined into my system to have courage to face some of the things that We'd, we'd want to retreat from. So this year is all about a level of refinement and I'm working with Mastery and Mysteries and I have a program that's coming up called the 11 Kings and Queens, Manifesting as If by Magic. And this is that place where when you are able to find your energy loss, your power loss, where are the power drains? And that's what I help you figure out. Where are the losses? Where are you not operating in refinement? Where are you not operating at the highest level of king or queen? You may not have even started any of this kind of work. Then we plant your visions according to king and queen, not according to you or me at this level of reaction, interaction, you know, what, what's happening? Where might you go off track with some of these very big things like I'm talking about, you know, being diagnosed with a terminal illness, you might just spend your life dwelling on that or locating yourself as that energy. Instead, what's the refinement? How do you become a queen of courage, a queen of, I'm gonna live the best life, the best life, I'm gonna take the best risks to live the life and that goes into business as well. So all my visions, when I put money into things, I've, I've always known it will come back because it's all part of that beingness of being at queen level. And this year, I really want to invite people in who have never worked in a spiritual, let's say archetypal way, including not only big business ideas, but also 
ceremonial ideas, key timing moments, when, when to enact, when to step back from something, which would be the cycles of the moon, when to pause, which is mysteries, legacy, um, receiving ideas, when to action. And this is a really different system than working in a corporate way and it uh, produces incredible results. So we are talking like the level of business, which is I made a commitment at some point, a refinement for myself was coming from a place of always seeing big business as an advocate for the planet, as an advocate for animals and people and the planet, big business always seems like a problem to me. I had to refine my response to that to become okay, well, if I can influence big business at the highest level, so that means what do I do? The map for me was then clear that I needed to work with the highest level of influence in that world. So it meant I have to work with the, the CEOs is one level, the owners of business, the people who are actually making the decisions, the people whose vision I can tweak as a level of refinement. And I would have not wanted to mention um, billionaires thinking they're, they're unapproachable, inaccessible, something far out. Consciously during ceremony started to bring those people in and to work with that level of money as well, to work with that level of advising, that level of money through influence was a choice on my part. It wasn't um, I didn't see that as something that I, I was going to do, but then I, I was requested to do it at a certain level. Great spirit connected me at that level. And so I said, yes. And so I'm working at that level. And the accessibility to the work that I do at the most accessible, rather than being a private client, say, say that's not on the books for you to work with somebody privately, and you may feel it's too much, somebody guiding you. Well, it's to work with the program that I'm creating, which is 11 Kings and Queens manifesting as if by magic. And it will start, it's specifically starting February 23rd because it's deep in early planting season. It's cyclical, it's, it's, it's the perfect time to do it. By the time we are putting the seeds out of your greatest masterpieces, of your works of art, of your creations at the highest level, of your business at the highest level visions. We will be deep in the perfect cycle of planting. And so I'm going to put the information as ever. You can see it above in my Instagram posts on my links. It will be 11 Kings, Kings and Queens manifesting as if by magic. And right now I'm inviting people in. So if you feel that you know somebody who's an owner of a business, who has not tried to look at their loss of power, where are they losing power, and try this approach, please share that with them. And I'm very happy to have a conversation and you know, point you in the right direction, and see if it's a fit. But wishing you all a incredibly prosperous 2023.